All right, so what we're gonna be talking about today is how to use SketchUp just for some basic uh, practices in order to complete your beginner SketchUp checklist. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to SketchUp for schools. And the easiest way that I found to do that is to click on the nine dots that are at the top right-hand corner of your screen once you're logged into Google Chrome. Then you're gonna go down to more. You're gonna scroll down to the bottom where it says SketchUp for schools. You're going to click on that. You're going to open it up. It might take a little bit of time for it to load, but eventually it'll load on up. And then you'll be able to see where all of your projects are. And remember that this also links to your Google Drive. Now, when you're on this home page, you're going to go up to Create New. So I'm going to click Create New. And generally, we are going to be using millimeters. And especially we're going to want to use millimeters when we're going to, need to be making small things because millimeters is a pretty small unit. So I'm going to click on millimeters. Now, if for some reason you just default and you use the feet and inches, that's fine. It's just when you go to type in dimensions, you're going to want to type in mm for millimeters. So again, I'm going to make a simple template. It's always important to title what you're working on. I'm going to title this one SketchUp Basics. And it's also a good idea to um, put it in the date. Okay, so I'm going to put in today's date. Today's date is 10. And then I'm going to put period instead of a dash 31 dash 19 or period dash 19. Click OK. Then that's going to let me bring me to my drive. I'm going to save it into my folder. You can always create an extra folder if you want to, but I'm just going to keep it in my classroom folder. So now I'm on the drawing board and what I'm going to first do is I'm going to check my checklist. The first thing it says to do is to draw a rectangular shape. Make sure the dimensions are as follows, 20 millimeters and um, 20 millimeters and 15 millimeters width. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to show you the easiest way that I found to do it. I'm not saying that it is the easiest, but this is the easiest way I found to do it. So I'm going to come over here to my rectangular tool. I'm going to choose the rectangle rectangle tool. And I'm going to click and drag until I make a rectangle. Now you'll notice that in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, it's saying that it's 859.53 millimeters by 1709.06 millimeters. Now that's obviously way bigger than we want. But as soon as I unclick um, my mouse, so I clicked and dragged in order to make that rectangle, I can just go ahead and type in my dimensions. So I know that I want it to be 20 and um, 20 millimeters long and 15 millimeters wide. And again, I could type in the mm just to put those units in, but I can also just type in the 20 and 15 since I know that um, I'm in millimeters for this uh, project. Then I'm gonna click enter. And then you're probably like, whoa, my shape disappeared, but it is down there. It's just this really little tiny thing down here. So we wanna zoom in so that way it's easier to see. So I'm gonna use the zoom window and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag just the small area that I want to zoom in on, and I'm going to let go. Now, obviously, that made a pretty big difference, and I still want to zoom in a little bit more, but I'm also going to want to pan around a little bit. So what I'm going to do, or I'm going to orbit first. So orbit tool, I'm going to click on that and click and drag so that way I can see a little bit more of it. Now, I can also use my two fingers or the scroll um, key on your mouse in order to get a little bit closer. So again, I'm just using the two finger, two finger scroll on my uh, trackpad in order to do that. And then I want to pan and I want to move it over. So I'm going to hold down shift and that's going to make the pan tool appear. And I'm just going to move it over. And that's just a shortcut. You can um, also grab the pan tool from over here. So now let's take a look at what my next thing is. So my next instruction is draw a line from the midpoint from the 20 millimeter side to the opposite 20 millimeter line. So what I'm going to do I'm going to grab my line tool. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to find the midpoint, which is where that cyan um, shows up. I'm going to draw it to the other side. And again, I'm drawing it from my 20 millimeter side to my other 20 millimeter side, which is the longer side of my rectangle. I already knew that from before. So now I'm zooming in just a little bit more. And let's take a look back at the checklist. It says pull out one of the smaller rectangles made. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to use my push pull tool. Okay. And again, you hover over it to figure out what the tool is called. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to use my push pull tool and I'm going to pull it up and bam. Now I've got one rectangle that's flat, one rectangle that's up higher. So now what I'm going to do 
is I am going to go back to my checklist. Right? It says create a circle on the top plane of the larger rectangle. The circles are found right where the rectangle tool is found. So I'm going to click on that, but you'll notice that there's a circle one. So I'm going to click that, and it says to choose where you want um, your, the center of your circle to be. You're going to click that, and you're going to click and drag. It's going to show you that as you move farther away from your center of your circle, it's going to increase the radius. Then I'm going to let go, <coughs> and there's my circle. So another thing done. Then I'm going to cut the circle out by pushing in the circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to Sketcher for Schools. I'm going to go back to that push-pull tool. I'm going to click on my push-pull tool. I'm going to hover over that circle. I'm going to click and drag and push it down. So now I'm cutting a hole in the top of that. Then let's go down here. Use the arc tool to create a curved corner somewhere on your object. So this is something that I'm going to show you the way that I know the easiest way to do it, but I'm not saying there's not an easier way. If this is one way, you go to the arc tool. I like choosing the, um, the two-point arc, which is when you're going to choose the left and right sides of the arc, and then you also choose the top after. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to make my curved corner down here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click on one spot, click on the other spot, and then I'm going to move right on over here, and I'm going to click. Then you'll see that it's got this nice curve that it created. Now, what I want to do is I want to make it so that way it's just that shape that's curved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my select tool. I'm going to click and drag the area that I want to delete. So just a little bit because I want to snip off that corner. Then it doesn't look like it worked that time. Let's try it one more time. Okay. And then I'm going to try clicking delete. So I'm going to click on it, delete. Sometimes it makes you do it line by line. So I'm going to delete that again. I'm going to delete that line. Now I've got a nice curved edge. Now I could also do it on this upper one, or I can push and pull this one that I just did. So I can push and pull it, so that way I've got a nice curved three-dimensional object. Now if ever you want to undo something, you can either click down here where it says undo, or you can just press Control z So then it flattens again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show you guys how I would do the curve on this corner that's right here. And in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my curve or to my arc tool. I'm going to click. I'm going to click the opposite side. I'm going to click where I want my curve to end. And again, sometimes it's a bit finicky. But anyways, what I just did there is I just made my curve. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push pull tool again, that spot um, that's right here. So that way I have a nice curved edge. Then I got this part that's all flattened. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that. I'm going to delete it. And then I've got my nice curved edge again.